What's happening everyone, my name is Alex and welcome back to a new review. For today we have a new smartphone from Blue and this one is called the S8 Plus and just as the name suggests the phone is very similar to the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. Now a Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus costs about seven to eight hundred dollars and this one costs about hundred and fifty dollars. So realistically you can't expect the same performance from this one. So what do we get for that money? Well first of all we get a six inch screen that has a resolution of 1440 by 720 so realistically a 720p resolution. We also have the MediaTek 6750T which is an octa core CPU that's paired with four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage. Out of that 64 gigs of internal storage we only have about 54 gigs left after the operating system but luckily the phone can take an SD card and that SD card can also be used as internal storage. When you first see this phone well it looks very similar to the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus but if you look close enough you're gonna notice that we have somewhat larger bezels all around the screen. Also even though the glass covering the screen has curved edges the screen underneath the glass is not actually curved so not like the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. Also the back on this one it's actually made out of plastic so on the original S8 Plus it's actually made out of glass but to this one we have plastic and the design on the back it's somewhat different as well. So on the back there we have the flash we have two cameras one of them it's a 3 megapixel camera and the other one it's a 16 megapixel camera and we also have a very small fingerprint scanner. Since that fingerprint scanner it's so small it's also very difficult to press and you actually have to press it like 3-4 times for the phone to actually unlock and I kind of gave up on using it because it's just too annoying to use. Moving on to the phone's frame. So the phone's frame it's made out of metal just as we've seen on the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. However this is a different type of metal therefore the phone it's heavier. So you're definitely gonna feel the difference when you hold this in your hand. So on the right hand side we have the power button and the power button it's also made out of metal and on top we have what looks to be like a secondary microphone however I don't believe that's a real microphone and we also have the slot for the SIM card. So this device can take either two SIM cards or a SIM card and an SD card. On the left we have the volume keys and those ones are also made out of metal and luckily we don't have that annoying Bixby button because that button is very annoying on the original S8 Plus. And moving all the way to the bottom of the device there we have a USB-C port, we also have the microphone and the speaker. The speaker doesn't sound that amazing, doesn't get that loud, so definitely not the best speaker that I've seen from a budget phone. As for that USB-C port, well first of all the phone doesn't support OTG and it doesn't support fast charging, so charging the phone from 0 to 100 is done in about 3 hours and 20 minutes, so very very slow. And since we are talking about charging we might as well talk about the battery life. So inside this phone we have a 3600 mAh battery. Now unfortunately the battery life it's not great. So you are kind of gonna be able to make it run an entire day and get about 3 hours of screen on time. And realistically 3 hours of screen on time from a 3600 mAh battery it's not that great. And I guess we are moving to the front of the device and starting all the way at the top. So first of all we have a notification light and that's great. We also have the speaker and the front facing camera. The front facing camera it's a 5 megapixel camera and the picture quality is just average. So as always um, as we've seen from budget devices if you have plenty of light the pictures do turn out okay but as soon as you don't have enough light well the pictures become kind of blurry and grainy and kind of unusable in my opinion. Moving on to the 6 inch screen. Well first of all the screen has a resolution of 720p and I know a lot of you aren't gonna be happy about that. This is also an IPS panel therefore the viewing angles are uh, acceptable but the screen doesn't seem to get that bright so whenever you take this phone outside it's kind of difficult to see it. Other than that the screen looks okay but definitely not mind blowing. The screen sensitivity is also average, nothing spectacular and I did find myself having to type the same letter um, twice on a few occasions. And the screen can also register up to 5 touches in the same time and I guess that's a good thing. Now before we go any further I want to show you some sample pictures that I took with those rear cameras. So even though we have two cameras on the back in reality one of them it's useless so one of them doesn't actually do anything. So if you're hoping to get um, those pictures with the cool bokeh effect well the pictures look absolutely horrible and uh, it's just a software generated effect. So we can't exactly say that we have dual cameras on the back of this phone. The camera app looks ok and it has a whole bunch of mods and effects including a manual mode but realistically the camera on the back of this phone is not that good so you can actually take full advantage of that manual mode. If you have plenty of light the pictures kind of turn out ok. Now the camera has a hard time focusing even if you have plenty of light so you're gonna find yourself um, pressing the screen multiple times so you can actually get your subject in focus. So definitely not the fastest or the best camera out there. And if you take pictures at night well you're better off if you don't take any because the pictures are so dark and so grainy that you can't really see anything in them. So definitely not the best cameras on the back of this phone. 
And we are moving to the phone's performance. Well, just like everything else about this phone, the performance is average, but that's understandable because we only have that MediaTek 6750T and 4 gigs of RAM. So the scores that we are gonna get on the Antutu benchmark and the Geekbench 4 are somewhat low. The phone's UI is also pretty bad and this is the exact same UI that we've seen on the Yumi DG S2 Pro and if you've watched my review of that phone, yeah, the UI is absolutely useless and it just slows down the phone, it doesn't actually do any good for the phone. First of all, it has built-in ads, that's right, you can get an ad on your screen at any time for any reason and I don't know, maybe it's just me but that's not right. Another thing I dislike about it is the fact that you cannot change the launcher, so you cannot install install Nova Launcher and just get rid of everything. No, because um, you can install the launcher, but you're not going to be able to use it as the default launcher. So if you want to do that, you're going to have to root the phone and so on. So once again, I'm not sure why anyone would want to buy a phone that doesn't allow you to change the launcher. Most apps will still do okay after they load. I mean, it takes a couple of seconds to load, but that has to do with that MediaTek 6750T. So for example, if you're going to use Chrome, if you give it a couple of seconds to load, you can still use Chrome just as you would on any other phone. On the YouTube app, of course, the maximum resolution is going to be 720p. However, the videos that you're going to watch at that resolution go quite good and very smooth. Gaming, it's also possible, but the phone gets fairly hot whenever you're gaming, so you're mostly going to feel that the frame gets um, warm. Now, the performance is decent, but if you're going to play some graphics-intensive games, you may see some skipped frames here and there. Moving on to the GPS unit inside this phone, well surprisingly enough the GPS unit actually works decent, so it takes the phone like 3-4 seconds to find your location, but after your location is found it doesn't seem to lose it, and I tried the Google Maps with it and it does seem to work okay. As for sensors, well the phone doesn't have a gyroscope, therefore you're not going to be able to use this as a VR headset, so keep that in mind. Moving on to connectivity, so the phone supports 4G connectivity and we also have dual band Wi-Fi, but like most budget phones these days there is no NFC, but that was to be expected. First of all, the call quality, the call quality is decent I'm gonna say, I mean it's not the best that I've heard, but not horrible. And the speaker on top here gets loud enough so you can hear most conversations. Now the speeds over Wi-Fi and 4G are also decent, but it depends how far you are from your router. For example, at home I have a mesh Wi-Fi system, so my Wi-Fi is good everywhere, but um, I've noticed that if I go to other people's houses and I connect to their Wi-Fi, the range isn't that great. And it's time to conclude this video. So everything about this phone is average or just below average, and the only reason why someone would actually buy this phone versus a good budget phone is the looks, because it looks like a Samsung Galaxy S8+. Plus. And I can imagine that some people need that look. Me personally, I would just buy another um, budget phone that actually works great, like the Xiaomi Redmi five plus so if you're looking for a phone that looks like an s8 plus this could be an option but if you're looking for a good budget phone i recommend that you get something else all right guys hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did like it press that like button don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching